This ongoing issue started about a month ago, but let me provide some context first. I'm 24 years old, and I live with my parents. My family is not well off and never has been, and pretty much all the money I make goes into supporting the household. My relationship with my parents is not the best. We bicker quite often and whenever I'm not working or hanging with friends, I tend to stick to myself. I don't want to write a hard luck story or anything like that, but I've had it tough growing up. Fitness has always been my go-to escape. I see it as a healthy way to get my mind off personal burdens, while also providing a good excuse to leave the house. There's a park about a 10-minute drive from my house that has a workout facility, with bars for pull-ups, dips, and other calisthenic exercises. During the summer months, I like to go there to work out as nature helps calm my mind. I like to go at nighttime because since it's a public park, it tends to get busy during the day. So one night, while my parents were arguing, I decided to slip out of the house to go work out. It was an extremely hot summer night, probably 85 degrees. I remember breathing in the humid air as I walked from my doorstep to the beat-up white Corolla sitting in our driveway. I started the rickety engine and rolled down the windows as the warm summer breeze flowed through my hair. I arrived at the park and exited my car. I was the only car in the lot. It was probably 10 or 11 p.m. The park was completely empty at this time. The beautiful scenery mixed with the steamy air to create a soothing atmosphere, which is another reason why I like this park so much. It sits on top of the hill that overlooks the downtown area of my city, which always adds pleasant and sentimental emotions to my evenings. Anyway, I started a set on the pull-up bar. I wasn't really counting the repetitions. When I work out, I just do it till failure, then take a break and do it a couple more times. It was somewhere between my sets when I took a break to loosen up my arms. Before I got back on the bar, though, an indescribable feeling came over me and a subconscious urge forced me to turn my head around. Standing literally a foot away from my face was a tall, beaten-looking man. I actually screamed and jumped like five feet back. He let out a raunchy, boisterous laugh and apologized, saying he didn't mean to scare me. His appearance and mannerisms were extremely eccentric right off the bat, like he was damn near face to face with me. He clearly had something wrong with him. I asked him why he was so close to me, and he said he lives here. He explained that he sees me working out here all the time and asked me if I could teach him. Now I'm a very non-confrontational type of person, and especially during a time like that I really just wanted to be left alone. I awkwardly, but politely told him I'm just going to do some pull-ups and leave. I hopped back on the bar and continued my set. His words marinated in my mind. He sees me here all the time. I felt the gaze of his eyes burning the back of my neck, but like I said, I'm very non-confrontational. While he did make me increasingly uneasy, I didn't really know what to say or do about it. But then something really weird happened. Right as I was about to finish my set, I heard him mutter my full name. My blood instantly turned cold as I jumped off the bar and slowly backed away. I said a shaky what? He didn't respond and instead just stared at me with his crazed, wide-eyed smile. I thought I might have been hearing things. That's how bizarre it was. I started to get an awful feeling in my gut, like something bad was about to happen. Without another word, I decided to quickly walk back to my car and leave. I felt that man staring at me while I retreated, and thankfully he didn't follow me. Before I left the park though, I took one last look and I saw him hanging from the bar, attempting to do a pull-up. I watched as he grabbed the bar, tried to pull himself up and then failed and tried again in the exact position I was previously in. I swiftly left the park without looking back. The entire ride back, I questioned myself. Did he really say my name? Was I hallucinating? I tried to forget about it and eventually I did. I woke up early the next day to get to work. I work construction and I have to wake up very early before my parents, so I was the first one to notice the unmarked envelope sitting at my front door. It was addressed to me. 
I picked it up and figured I'd read whatever was inside whenever I had the chance. It was another sweltering hot summer day and I took my lunch break early to cool down. I sat in my car while eating my pre-made sandwich and decided to open the envelope. I didn't really know what to expect, but never in a million years did I think I'd find 10 printed photos of me. They were all unknowingly taken. One was of me in my car, one was of me at work, one was of me exercising at the park. I instantly remembered that creepy man for the night before and started to feel uncontrollably nauseous. I stared in disbelief as I flipped through the rest of them. One was of my house, and the worst of all was a photo of me sleeping, taken from outside my window. I nearly choked on my food as tears rolled down my cheeks. I felt unsafe. I told my boss a serious issue popped up and I left work right away. He wasn't happy with me, but I didn't care. I took a picture of the photos and drove directly to the police station. I gave the police the photos and explained my encounter at the park. I described the man to them, and they said they would look into it. I told my parents about it too, and for the first time in a long time, I actually got some sympathy out of them. More things started happening though. A couple nights later, at like 3 a.m., I awoke to knocks at the door. I didn't open it, assuming the worst. One day, I found a sticky note pasted to my car window with a heart drawn in Sharpie. I went back to the police to report this, and they said they would open up a stalker investigation. I haven't heard back from them yet. I figured it's hard to build a case without having concrete evidence. This happened about a month ago, and I've been on high alert ever since. My parents are looking for a new home which is already tough given our financial situation. I'll update if anything further happens, but until then, I'll continue to sleep with one eye open.